today we're going to be talking about the Renaissance, and in particular, I'd like to talk about Renaissance art. The art in the Renaissance reflected all of the other changes that were going on in the Renaissance politically, religiously, and academically. Um, and so the first thing you need to know is that the Renaissance began in Italy. Sometimes it's called the Italian Renaissance. And the word Renaissance literally means rebirth. So it was a rebirth or a renewal of classical culture in academics, art, and religion. Um, integral in the Renaissance, one of the most important ideas was the concept of humanism. And humanism was a philosophy that emphasized the human, the real, the what's going on right now on earth over the divine and spiritual. And that was new um, because before that, in the Middle Ages, as you know, there was a lot of emphasis on the Catholic Church. And so the church was the most important thing. So humanism moved away from that. Humans' daily life became the most important thing. Some of the most famous artists during the Renaissance are the Ninja Turtles, right? The Ninja Turtles were named after these guys. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello. Um, two other important artists during the Renaissance were Botticelli and Van Eyck. And Van Eyck was actually Dutch. He was not Italian, so he um, became a Renaissance painter later on in the Renaissance as it spread across Europe and the rest of the world. All right, the second thing I wanted to talk about with the Renaissance were the types of paint. Um, so in Renaissance art, we have a very clear pattern of what art was like before the Renaissance and then another pattern of what it became after the Renaissance. So, before the Renaissance, there was a lot of emphasis on tempura paint, and tempura is made from eggs. Um, they would paint with one layer of paint in different colors, and it, there's a lot of shimmery gold in tempura paintings. Um, they look, though, very flat. Like, if you look at it, you kind of think it's a one-dimensional painting. It almost looks like something I might draw, very one-dimensional and not very lifelike. Um, and a lot of times, they're using a lighter color palette in tempura paint. As the Renaissance continued, they began to use oil paint. And so oil paint, of course, is oil-based. Um, they would put lots of different layers of paint in a painting to give it a three-dimensional effect and to achieve just the right color. Um, so there's lots of different layers, which gives it a multi-dimensional appearance. Um, oil paint is sometimes described as very glossy, almost glass-like, but it's not shimmery. You don't see the same shimmery gold, just maybe it almost looks like somebody put clear fingernail polish over it. It might be glossy looking. And a lot of times they're using much darker colors in the oil paint. Um, another thing to think about when you're looking at artwork is scale. And scale, of course, is the size of objects relative to one another in a painting. So before the Renaissance, they used what was called the hieratic scale. Um, and as you notice, it has the same root as the word hierarchy. So remember, a hierarchy is a ranking. So a hieratic scale means that the larger objects in a painting are the most important. So they're ranked according to importance, and the size reflects that. Because religious topics were so important in the Middle Ages, the hieratic scale usually meant that holy people were much larger in paintings than regular people. Um, people like Jesus, Mary, the saints, priests, would be very large. Um, and then other people like you and I, plants and animals, regular things that were not divine, would end up being very small. Um, the hieratic scale means that when you look at a painting, you can tell right away what the artist thinks is the most important thing in the painting, but it's not accurate. It doesn't look anything at all like the real world looks, because we know in the real world, um, Things are bigger if they're closer to us, and then things that are further away appear smaller down the horizon. Okay. Well, after the Renaissance, that's how they began to paint, and it's called perspective painting. Um, so in a perspective painting, the larger objects are closer, and the smaller objects are further away. Um, a lot of times they would put detail into the background and perspectives um, with lots of tiny, far away objects. And they're much more accurate looking. They look a lot more like the view we see in everyday life. All right. The next thing to think about 
and Renaissance paintings are the subjects. Um, the subjects really changed in painting after the Middle Ages. So, of course, during the Middle Ages, divinity was the subject. They were holy subjects. They were religious subjects. Um, most paintings had religious topics, like Bible stories, um, churches that were famous, mass would be painted. They were all holy scenes. Most of the time, people in the paintings had large halos. Again, they're those shimmery gold halos that are much bigger than the person's head to show, hey, they're holy. And a lot of times, the holy people in these pictures glow themselves, like they literally give off light in the picture. After the Renaissance, that changed. The subject comes more to focus on humanity, which goes well with the humanism movement. Um, so even if they were painting religious people like Jesus or Mary, they look much more realistic. They look like a regular person. Um, they began to try to really accurately represent human anatomy. So these guys like da Vinci had spent a lot of time actually studying science and learning about human anatomy and how the human body works and they had sketched the whole muscular system, the whole skeletal system. They're very concerned with getting the perspective right, the proportions right in terms of size, um, getting the muscles the right shape, and making a person really look like a human body looks. That's also why during the Renaissance you get a lot of nude art, because these artists are studying human anatomy, and so they're wanting to represent that in their paintings. There's a lot less religious art um, after the Renaissance, and instead there's more emphasis on daily, ordinary life. Um, before the Renaissance, paintings had to be pretty. The subjects had to be worthy. Um, but after the Renaissance, everyday life was fine. Somebody just eating supper was fine. Even things in life that weren't beautiful were considered worth art because that was what people really did. Ah. All right, and last but not least, I want to talk about setting in Renaissance art. So before the Renaissance, the setting was usually indoors. Um, a lot of times it emphasized church, and a lot of the paintings were even set inside churches. The background often lacked details. If it had details, it was probably ornate decorations to show how glorious God was. Decorations in the church, holy symbols, and a lot of gold. After the Renaissance, though, the settings became more natural. Um, they started to emphasize nature. And a lot of the paintings were even set outdoors. A lot of times the backgrounds became very detailed. They showed what's going on in the distance. Um, and a lot of the paintings start to include plants and animals to emphasize the natural world. Um, as you can see, all of these things that we've talked about, the before and after in Renaissance art, echoes those humanist ideals. So the before is very true to the Middle Ages ideals, right? The religious ideals. Um, emphasizing the church, emphasizing what's proper. And then after the Renaissance, those things are very true to humanism, to emphasizing everyday life, the natural world, science, and philosophy. Thanks.